mom is Bosnick, and he's trying to make them not run away, and he's trying to get up close, so they know that he's trying to make the world better, and he might be a London Bosnick. This Bobby, he said, this piece is young like you. Its edges are still rough. It needs to travel more places. It needs to be bumped around, smoothed, and polished. They see themselves as one piece of a larger school community, then a greater Boston community, a Jewish community, then a Jewish community in the world. A lot of times it's helpful when we make it so people can help themselves. If we can help even more people, then they can start to help other people. They also had a vision of Judaism that said that Judaism is an important tool for enhancing human life. That kids need to learn about things and then they need to really delve into it and figure out what it is they could do to help and then figure out what it is that people need them to do to help. And we wanted to come up with a project that would enable us to make a name for ourselves in a way that would show goodness. I think Lee Mood comes into everything we do. I think it's ingrained in Tikkun Olam, it's ingrained in Ruach and, and Kihila and all the core values of Rashi. Rashi was the first place that taught me the true meaning of Kihila and community. I still get to carry that with me. Wanting and, and yearning kind of to be embedded within the Jewish community, you know, it's again directly attributable to what I was taught at Rashi. There is a connection between all of us in terms of the fact that we care about one another, even years later. That, that's unique. I mean, you, you just don't see that. I've spent my life in schools, um, very fine schools, but you don't see something like that. When I see a resident happy, I know that I just did like the best type of magic. And the, and the best type of magic is lifting up resident spirits. Every parent wants to raise a child that's kind and that's compassionate and has a good heart and that feels a responsibility to their community and to the world. We often think that we should do things to mend the world outside and we forget that it's important to mend the world inside as well. When Rabbi Ellen asked if there was anybody in need to say a Misha Bear, it's a prayer for healing. You see these teenagers all rise to thinking of somebody beside themselves. It was the year the Sukkot Shalom was first erected. That was the year that Leah Rabin came. She said, this is so brilliant, and what you did right here needs to travel around the world. One of the biggest social justice things at Rashi that's affected me is uh, JCL. We read to the kindergartners there. They learn that kids everywhere have similar needs and it doesn't really matter who you are, what color you are, what faith you are. Um, if you all do something for each other, then you are solving the problems. We're not going to be collecting clothing that has holes in it or has stains on it or is basically falling apart. And, and I said to the girls, I said, why do you think that's important? And without even blinking or even thinking about it, the girls looked at me and said, because then the people we're helping will think we don't care about them. Students learn about kavod and treating each other with respect and with understanding in everything and that it's not just you, that you're part of a bigger picture and a bigger fabric of society. Both of our children learned that they had a voice, that they could and should be heard, and that how they spoke would impact the rest of their world. The fact that kindergartners are being asked these questions at age five shows them so much kavod and says, we, we, we believe that you have something to say about this. This is a really safe, nurturing place that builds the kids' self-esteem but it also teaches them to question and to ask questions. I think it is that they learn right away that the other is us. When um, Aaron Fairstein's building burnt down, and we decided to make a quilt in honor of what he had done. It was such a community effort. As a student at Rashi, I was continuously told that I could make a difference. 
I think social justice is about taking action without being asked. That it wasn't um, giving and losing something, but really giving and gaining something. Social justice and what we're trying to teach here is not an add-on. It is so in their consciousness. It is so in their blood and their bones. We don't just say, we don't just talk about it. It's for real. You don't know what specific causes or initiatives they'll undertake, but you know it's going to be there in some form. It turned kids into menches. I feel that in my everyday life that the social justice program has made a huge change. When I graduate, um, I will definitely be much more involved in giving Sadaka and social justice than if I hadn't gone to Rashi. My work at CJP is very much rooted in, um, in kind of social justice and ensuring that um, we're living in a great society and a great Jewish community. Feeling like they want to make a difference like they can. These are five, six-year-old kids. You should see them. They're like, Stephanie, how can we help? How can you? Little steps already that the, the five, six years old are thinking about. I mean, and this is the future generation. It's like our magic in the best kind of way. It's great to help everyone. Well, maybe I can do something like that, too. It's really helped me reach out to the outside world. We can actually make a difference. You feel like you've made a huge difference in someone's life.